Okay, so we look at the Star Wars Battlefront 2 beta at 21 by 9. What a huge difference from the first game this is. It's a far greater step towards what I originally wanted from the revamped IP, and it gives me a lot of positive hope for the full game. The beta allows you to delve into the multiplayer and really get a feel of what the title will offer. I wish I'd been able to play this earlier and get this video out before, but yeah, typical day job woes. Anyway, first, the 21x9 support. EA, well, DICE specifically, really are one of the best developers out there for 21x9 content. Their games more often than not support 21x9 resolutions well, with very little issue, and this is certainly no exception. Gameplay correctly shows off more on the sides of the screen at all moments, with screen effects scaling, not even stretching, to use the entire screen space. Gorgeous. The HUD scales to the sides, both the main and in-game menus use the entire screen space with the background scene extending to show more whilst locking the menu elements mostly to 16x9. They work perfectly. Sadly, the one 16x9 black barred moment there is are the pre-rendered cutscenes, but the other cutscenes are properly rendering 21x9 footage. Finally, loading screens are 21x9 with the image just zooming to avoid distortion. Now before I go on, I must point out a bit of a problem with the beta. There is no working FOV slider. For whatever reason, the game, whilst clearly going to support an FOV slider in the full title, just doesn't feature one in the beta. The FOV you're stuck with natively is just about okay, but like always, one FOV level will never suit everyone, and it was just too low for my personal taste. Thankfully you can edit the FOV value in the game's option.ini file to get what you like. Now, I know the beta is probably pretty much over by the time this video goes up, but just so you know, in case you need to do it in the future for whatever reason, you go into your documents folder, and inside there is a folder called Star Wars Battlefront 2 Beta. Inside that folder is a folder called Settings, and inside there is a file called Profile Options underscore Profile. Just open that file in Notepad, find the line gatrender.fieldview, and it will be natively a value of 1. I just changed mine to 1.2 for this recording, but actually would probably like to go to 1.3. Three. Then, once you've made your choice, save the file and close and off you go. Very easy. Performance wise, oh how I love you dice. This is a gorgeous game. The leaves blowing in the wind, vivid colours, beautiful locations, fighting effects, they're all just gorgeous. It really is a treat for the eyes. And the great thing is that on ultra everything settings, and yes that includes manually putting ambient occlusion to ultra because the ultra preset leaves that at medium, I could run about 100 fps at all times at 30 for 40 by 1440 on a GTX 1080 Ti. I have no complaints here. Loading is fast, there was no stuttering or other graphical problems to be found, and yeah, it was a lovely experience to play. There are a number of graphic settings for you to play around with to get the performance you wish as well. There is also a DirectX 12 option, however from my understanding, reading up on it, there is no benefit to using it, at least for Nvidia users. In fact, it seems to have a slightly negative effect on performance. On the AMD side, I have seen murmurs that it actually might have some benefit to performance, but because I don't have an AMD card, I can't personally verify this. On an annoying note, there are only FXAA variants and TAA anti-aliasing options. Why there is no MSAA, for example, I don't know. Battlefield 1 has the same frustration. You either have to go with the fuzzy look of FXAA, or the smoothed over, uncrisp image of TAA. There is no crisp anti-aliasing option, like MSAA, to use in this. More generally, I'm not a fan of the game's UI. Menus have effects that make the UI elements look like they're a little fuzzy, with tracking lines going through them, and it just makes them look low res. They don't look crisp and are genuinely not nice to look at. Yeah, I'm not a fan. You can also completely rebind all inputs on a keyboard, a mouse, or controller. Interestingly, there is an option to choose between 1080p and 4K UI, but after trying both, I saw zero difference. Potentially a slightly less crisp UI can be seen with the 1080p option, but I'd be lying if I said I saw any real difference. You can also scale the HUD to your desired size, which is always lovely. There is full 7.1 surround sound support, and I believe even Dolby Atmos support, which is brilliant, as the sound quality to this game is epic. So, gameplay wise, there has been good development over the last game. General combat remains similar, with the usual lack of aiming down the sights with most weapons, you have three abilities that just need to cool down before being used again, you can fly, etc. 
However, basically this game just upped the quantity of it all. There are now more weapons, more vehicles to fly, more maps and so forth. I wasn't a huge fan of the first game, I lost interest in it after a few weeks, but this is grabbing me in a slightly different way and obviously whilst I need to wait for the full game before I know for sure, I think I'll be playing this a lot more than the first. The key changes for me are the improved class system for selecting different loadouts and the way you build battle points whilst playing that you can spend to spawn in as a hero or vehicle as opposed to just hoping to find a token on the ground to pick up and spawn as one, a far nicer system. I continue to love the ability to play in first and third person at any moment you like, with the only exceptions being when playing as heroes. By the way, for anyone wondering how you switch from third person to first again, you need to hold your toggle view button, so even though the controller menu might say something like button C to switch view, it's actually hold C. Clicking it once just swaps shoulder. I'm also loving the new combat role, not that I found it crazily helpful, it's just cool. You also have the two ways of reloading mechanic, either letting a weapon passively cool or you can do a very quick cooldown but that means you can't fire your weapon during this period. You can also time your reload with the cooler slider and if you manage to hit the reload key on the coloured section on the slider bar then you instantly are cooled down which is a nice mechanic to return. Now there are what appear to be a well rounded number of game modes to choose from, Galactic Assault, Strike, but the one big one that many people will be excited for is Starfighter Assault, finally there are space battles. Now I'm not the biggest fan of this game mode, but I can't deny it plays well. In the beta you have 3 ships to choose from, Fighter, Interceptor and Bomber. Certainly with the Fighter the speeds you move at are brilliantly fast, zipping all around. Thankfully you have the visual aid for where to aim in order to hit your opponent, otherwise things would be far too difficult and I'd never hit anything. And controls are very simple, you can actually make them more difficult for yourself if you want to, but for what I'm looking to get from this game, they suited me beautifully. The last game type to talk about is arcade mode. Here you can play a load of different game modes to complete a set task, so maybe it's kill a certain number of enemy types when playing as a hero or playing a more standard game type, but yeah it's a fun single player or co-op way to play. It's also a great way to develop your skills and get used to playing as a hero or such without the difficulty and pressure of normal online play. Now a huge problem that will undoubtedly hit when the game launches are the loot boxes and card system. Currently in the beta you can't buy anything for real money, but 100% this will change for the final game, and the loot crate system in this is as crazy as it is for so many other games right now. I'm actually not going to talk about this much because Total Biscuit did a fantastic video on this which I'll link down in the description if you somehow haven't seen it already, and it's totally worth a watch to see how bad the system is. Once again, microtransactions have the ability to really damage the quality of a game. I'm disappointed about its inclusion, but I'm not surprised. So of course, the beta is missing tons of content and the final game will have such as the story mode, but from what I can see in the beta, I'm excited. I do have very large reservations about the loot box, card system and microtransactions and how they're going to negatively affect gameplay, but we will just have to wait and see how that unfolds. Remember though, however much you like the beta, don't pre-order. Wait for the reviews to come in before giving them your money. I'll get my 21 by 9 coverage out as soon as possible to launch. So I'm going to give the beta a WAF score of 4, it is so nearly perfect and from a 21 by 9 support point it is totally worth a play, bring on the final version, I don't see it getting any worse. So I hope that gives you some information how the game runs at 21 by 9 give this video a like if you found it helpful and subscribe for future info. For any of the games at 21 by 9 head over to my channel or the WAF website, hopefully I've covered it, if I haven't then leave a comment down below and I'll try and cover it, and if you'd like to support the channel the links to my Patreon page are in the description and Amazon affiliate links are there too. See you later.
Rebel blockade runners are destroyed. That should slow them down significantly. Another shield generator has fallen. <laughs> 